Hello everybody, my name is Alan, I'm from CyberLab and today will be another video about TrueNAS. This video will be part 5 where we're gonna explain a little bit more about R-Sync. And you're gonna ask Alan why I want to understand a little bit more about R-Sync and why it will be useful for me. And the answer is quite easy. R-Sync is another option for a backup. So in the previous video, I show how you can get all your data from your server to any cloud that you choose. But if you want to do all this communication internally in your LAN, you have two servers, one that uh, will be running as a normal server and another backup server, where you're gonna copy all this information through the backup server. In this way, if anything happens with your main server, you still have uh, the data in the second server. Of course, this backup will happen as often as your schedule. So you can set up for hourly, daily, and continue on. So if you like this idea, and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show you this But first of all, don't forget to leave your like, consider to subscribe for the channel, and let's understand a little bit more about it. Before we start to do any R-Sync, we need to understand the idea for R-Sync. First thing, we need to have two servers. In this way, I have a server A, where it's uh, finished with IP 1.49, and server 2 or server B that have the IP 238. This server A that will have all the information and I want to put in another server. And this second server will receive all this information. Have this one in mind, I will have two copies of the same information. So let's try to understand what kind of server that we have. Those two servers basically identical. They have 16 gigabytes of RAM memory. They are using the TrueNAS scale revision 20. 0.02.4 and they have a four cores. If I look here, it will be exactly the same information, only different IP address. Here, if I come here in my storage, they have uh, some storage, and if I come here in my storage, they have basically the same, a little bit different storage. What we need to do, first of all, to configure our R-Sync, we need to define where we want to save all this information. If I wanted to copy all the information data or I wanted to have all this information here in the data, I can use this folder data. But in our case, we wanted to create a folder called backup. And this folder called backup will keep all this information that will be my backup for my first server safe there and protect. So here I come and I will create a new data set, add a data set, and this data set will call backup. Then I come here and put save. This dataset backup, I can allow that other people to see, but in my case, I want only to keep as a safe data in the server B. So I will not come here and not configure any permission. We leave as a standard root permission, and only root will be able to access it. Because I don't want that no one in my network start to mess up or touch the data from the server A. So this reason that I will not allow to server A to have access as a SMB. Have this one, now we're gonna need to configure the R-Sync in the server B. So in this way, we come here in our system, service, and here all the services that TrueNAS have available for you. In the case, we are looking for the R-Sync. So in the R-Sync, we're gonna enable this option. If we select the start automatically, it means that all the time that he start my computer, they will start automatically. Because I want that this backup always happen, so I will keep as a start automatically. Now I come here and modify this information. I have uh, the port 873. This one is the standard port. And other thing, R-Sync don't have any way to protect. You don't need to put password. You don't need to do a lot of things. So I suggest you to don't open this port to use externally. If you want to have another computer external, try to use a VPN to have access for your network and use the R-Sync, but don't open the port 873 unless you have a specific reason. You're gonna ask what specific reason I would have to be able to access the port 873. Imagine if you want to share some project and you have that a lot of people have access for it. So you're gonna, through the R-Sync, allow the port 873 and allow the model name for the people that want to get this information. In our case, we're not gonna change the port and we're not gonna allow external access for this port. Now I need to configure the module. 
This module will be where they will save this information and what kind of access that we'll have in this server B. So I come here and put add sync module and I'll name it. In my case, I'm using as a backup, so I'll put backup. Now I want to locate what specific location in my server that will have this folder. So in this way, I come here, home, home, and I put backup. Because I didn't configure it in ACL, so it will not appear any permission or any specific permission for this folder. It will be only root access. Now I can put enable, otherwise will not have access for this module. And I come here and define what kind of access. If I want that they only copy this information or pull this information, I will select as a read only. If I want to only push this information, it will be write only. But if I want it to be able to read and write, because in the case of any issue happen, I want to write the information and copy back this information for my server. You're gonna be a little bit, will make more sense in the future, but now we're gonna lead as a read and write. Massimo connections, I can define how much connections that I want to connect simultaneously in my model. Because I'm using a local network, I can leave as a zero, will not affect anything. But if you have any reason that not more than one computer will connect this model in the same time, so I will define a number. Because we are not configured any ACL, I will not configure any permission yet. What I suggest you to configure a permission if you want to access or any other information. Uh, in this case, I will leave as a user as a root because the permission to access that folder is rather root. If you want to configure other user, I suggest you to do it, but you need to change the user and the group for it. So in this case, user and group will be root. Now I can define which specific IP address of machines allow to access. I could put 192.168.1.149, but in our case, we're not gonna do it. We're gonna leave as a standard and put save. Perfectly, now you just finish to configure everything in the server B where they will receive the information. Now we're gonna configure it to make a sync in the folder data. So I come here in data protection, and here I have my cloud. In data protection, I have my cloud sync, what I showed in the previous video, how you can do a cloud sync for your data. Now you're gonna do a R sync to have a local in your network. So I'll put add. I'll select the path that I want to backup. So in my case, will be the path data. Now I will define the remote host. So in the case, our remote host will be this one. So we'll put 192.168.1.238. I will select the model that I want. You could potentially use as SSH connection, but in this case, you need to connect the both uh, private key and public key in the both servers and need to create a proper SSH connection. If you guys want, I can post a video about it, please request in the description, but in this case, model will be much easier and that we're gonna do this kind of configuration. Only if you have a specific reason to use SSH, otherwise use model will work really good and without any problem. So now I come here and I will copy the name of the model. Name of the model will be backup, so I will put exactly the same name. Why backup? Because you can have a lot of different names and each name will configure one specific path for your data. So you need to choose exactly the same. If you write anything else, they will not find the correct model and will not sync. Now we're gonna select the user that we want to access. We can use as a root because I'm already using previous as a root, but I suggest you to use the specific user that you're using or a specific user that you have configured for that data. Now I come in direction, I can select push or pull. Because I don't have any information in the server B, I will push all the information and in the case that I delete, I will be able to do a pull for it. Now description, I will leave empty and I define how often it happens. So I can define that will happen each hour, daily, weekly, monthly, and continue. My, day, my case will be fine every day in the end of the shift. Now I can define times, compression, archive, delete, quiet. Have a look in these options and see which one that fit more for your needs. Always you can come here and read what it means and how will be beneficial for you or not. But in the case, we're gonna leave as a standard and put save. Now we have our, our rsync configured. But as we looked before, we don't have any data in our data. So we're gonna copy some information in that folder, at least we can sync it for the next server. 
So now inside this folder data, I will create a new folder. And this new folder, I will pass all this day, all my pictures that I have. In this case, I will pass around 532 megabytes of data and I will change for pictures. Now that I have my data there, I can come here and put run now, continue, and they start to run. If I come here, they are looking for the task and they will copy all the information for the server A to the server B. So we're gonna need to wait until they show as a finish. If I look here my server B and go to the storage, they already start to increase the quant of data. So they will finish the sync once that they have the 532 megabytes that we defined. If I come here, they already put as a successful. And if I refresh this part, they already have exactly the same quant of data. So now if you look for this specific backup, they have uh, 531 megabytes, exactly the same quant that we have before. So now if we come here in my photos, I still have all my photos here, but I will come here and delete this data. Now I don't have any more folders photos, and if I come here in my server A, they already disappear all the data for my data. So now I don't have anything, but let me that I make some snapshot correctly. I come here, properties, previous revision, and no, I don't have any snapshot for this case. So I don't have any data and I lose all my pictures. No, you don't lose your pictures because you always can make a uh, reverse rsync. So to do it, I can come here, data protection, and I will add a new one. I'll select what I want. So I come here and put home and data, what I wanted to copy this information before. R host, I will put exactly the same IP address, no, 238, modulus, backup will be exactly the same name. My user will leave as a root because we configure the other side as a root. Schedule, I can put once a month, after I will delete this information, I put save. In this way, I have my second rsync configured where they will pull all the information and have my information back. So I can put pull, configure, they will start to run, they will take some seconds, but if I come here open, there will appear the folder of data where I will have all my information back. If I come here and storage, if you look all this information, it's coming back. So if I look, the data or the backup that I had before was around 531 megabytes. And if I come here, let's return here, they have a 531 megabytes. So all my data just return and I have access for it. In this way, I will not lose any information and I will have a, a second copy for all my data in the second server. In this way, if anything happened with uh, my server A, I, my server B will keep the same information. So in this way, you're gonna have uh, two types of backup. The first one will be local in your network and the second one will be external. As I told, you need to have at least three copies for the same data. One that you're using live, one in another server and one external for your house in another server. In this way, we have the cloud sync that will be external in your house and this second copy in your house. So you are protect against of a failure or at least you have enough backup to prevent. Of course, if anything happened really bad, you can lose the tree data, but at least you're a little bit more protected. So guys, I hope that you like this video. As I told, rsync is another option for you to do a backup where you have all your data outside from your system. In this way, you can have uh, any loss of data in your main server and your second server will keep this data. So you have uh, two copies of the information. As a device, you should have at least three copies, two lives and one external. It means that uh, you could have uh, two servers running and a cloud server as a third copy. In this way, you have uh, three copies for your data and make it more safe for your application. So if you like this video and think that was interesting, don't forget to leave your like, consider to subscribe for the channel. And see you next time. Bye.